In this video, we will learn about subcutaneous injection administration. Before proceeding, ensure that you have physician's orders. Afterwards, exercise 10 rights of medication administration. For patient safety, make sure you perform three medication checks. Let's learn about those medication checks. Check number one, when you read the MAR and remove the medication from the drawer and identify patient's name, room number, date of birth, etc. Check number two, while preparing the medication, confirming medication label matches the MAR. Check number three, recheck the label on container prior to returning to the storage or check the label on the medication to the MAR prior to opening the package at the bedside. Once you have performed third check, explain the purpose of each medication and possible adverse effect to the patient. Ask the patient if they may have any question in regards to the medication or the injection. Then determine the possible site for the administration of subcutaneous injection. Avoid the areas which have bruising, edema, inflammation, redness, tenderness. Sites for subcutaneous injection can include outer aspect of the upper arm, abdomen area below the coastal margin to the iliac crest, anterior aspect of the thigh. These areas are easily accessible and large enough to allow multiple injections. Make sure you are using the right needle size according to your patient's build. Using your thumb and forefinger, grasp a skin fold of tissue at the injection site Measure the fold from top to bottom and check to ensure that needle is about half as long. Give preference to abdominal injection sites when you are administering insulin or heparin. Specifically, the best subcutaneous site to administer low molecular weight heparin, which is anoxaparin, is at least 2 inches or 5 centimeters to the right or left of the umbilicus. If the abdominal area is not available, look for the site on the thigh. Insulin injections should be systematically rotated within one anatomical region, either the abdomen or thigh. Help the patient find a comfortable position and ask him or her to relax. Perform hand hygiene and apply clean gloves and clean the site with the antiseptic swab in a zigzag manner, minimum for 30 seconds. When you are ready, remove the needle cap or protective sheath on the syringe by pulling it straight off. Hold the syringe between the thumb and the forefinger of your dominant hand as you are holding a dart. If your patient is of average size, hold the skin across the site or pinch a fold of skin with your non-dominant hand. Insert the needle quickly and firmly at a 45 degree to 90 degree angle, release the pinched skin, rest your non-dominant hand on the patient and use it to stabilize the syringe. If you are using an injection pen or giving heparin, continue to pinch the skin during the injection if your patient is obese. Pinch the skin and inject the needle below tissue fold to a 90 degree angle. Move your dominant hand to the end of the plunger and slowly inject the medication over several seconds. Retain your grasp on the syringe to keep it still. Quickly withdraw the needle. Place a swab or gauze pad on the site. Apply gentle pressure, but do not massage the site. If you have given heparin, hold on to the site for 30 to 60 seconds. Also, do not give any hot and cold pack to the injection site and do not massage the area. Hello nurses and nursing students. I hope you guys enjoyed learning this skill. Now what's next? Next we will be practicing some NCLEX style questions associated with the skill. So here is the first question on your screen. The nurse is administering a subcutaneous injection to a thin emaciated client. Where is the most appropriate site of administration for this client? And here are your four options. And take your time and choose which one is the answer before I discuss. Alright guys, so let's just go and read option number A. The deltoid area. 
Guys, this is not an appropriate site for subcutaneous injection. This is rather a site for intramuscular injection. Let's just look at option number B, the vastus lateralis site. This is not an appropriate site again for subcutaneous injection. This is what we use for intramuscular injection. Let's just look at the option number C, the dorsogluteal region. This is also incorrect because dorsogluteal site is also used for intramuscular injection. Now you guys know, answer is D. However, let's just still discuss it. D is correct, which says the upper abdominal area or upper abdomen. The client may have insufficient tissue for subcutaneous injection because you know your client is thin and emaciated. So therefore, the best site for these kind of patients can be abdominal area. So D is correct. Okay, now let's just move on to the next question. So here is the question number two on your screen. The nurse is preparing to administer a subcutaneous injection. The nurse knows to do the following. Select all that apply. So now you guys know it's a SATA question. We will be doing it using true and false strategy. Here are your five options. Please take your time and select in your notebooks what do you think is the right answer. All right, guys, let's just discuss option number A. Massage the site following injection. What do you guys think? That is incorrect because massaging the site can damage the underlying tissue and increase the absorption of medication. So that's why it's not a recommended practice. Let's just look at option number B. Clean the site with an antimicrobial swab. What do you guys think? That is correct because the site of injection should be cleansed prior to administering the injection. So that is a correct option. Now let's just look at option number C, which says wear gloves. And that is true. The nurse has to wear gloves during a subcutaneous injection as there is a risk of bleeding. And you guys know, whenever there is a risk of coming in contact with bodily fluids, the nurse has to wear gloves. Let's just look at option number D. Allow the site to dry completely after cleaning. And you guys learned that that is also true. You have to wait until that alcohol or the antimicrobial rub is air dry. And then you administer the injection. Look at the last option, which is E. Recap the needle following injection. And you guys know that is a big no-no because you don't want to get injured. We want to prevent needle stick injuries and that's why recapping will not be allowed. So E is incorrect. So this means option number B, C and D are the only correct options in these ones. I hope you guys are still enjoying and learning the session with us. Here is the last question on your screen associated with the skill. So the nurse is preparing to administer a subcutaneous injection to a client. Which principle regarding subcutaneous injection does the nurse understand is correct? So here are your four options. Take your time, pause your screen and select for yourself which one is the answer. All right, guys, let's just discuss option number A. Following the injection, the site should be gently massaged to promote absorption. What did you guys learn? That is incorrect because massaging can increase the rate at which the drug can be absorbed and should only be done if there is an absolute direction from the physician. Otherwise, it is not a recommended practice. Okay guys, now let's just look at the option number B. Medication injected into the subcutaneous tissue will be absorbed faster than through the intramuscular tissue. What do you guys think about it? That is incorrect because you guys know absorption is slower in the subcutaneous due to lack of blood vessels. Whereas it's way more faster when you're giving it intramuscular because lots of blood supply there. All right, now let's just review option number C. The best injection site for subcutaneous injections are the abdomen lateral thighs and upper arm. What do you guys think? That's what you learned in the video. That is absolutely correct. Those are the recommended sites for the subcutaneous injection. Option number D, the injection site should be rotated to a different anatomical locations with each injection. What do you guys think about it? That is incorrect. And you guys must be thinking, hmm, why? Now let's just review the answer for this. Although the exact same site should not be used, and should be moved around within the same region. So there is no need to rotate outside of the anatomical locations unless the entire surface of the skin has been used. So that's why this option is incorrect. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed learning clinical skill 
as well as NCLEX style question practice. That's what we do at FPNPC. We are always here to support the students and make sure you contact us if you have more queries. Please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, share it with your friends. Thank you very much.